What's up guys? All right, per request, here is my video on my study experience and exam experience for my CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus certification. This one is for the CSO-002 version, which actually just got phased out for the CSO-003. Um, that one just started getting rolled out in June of 2023, so the particular one that I'm going over today actually expires in December, so by the time you watch this video, uh, it's probably going to be phased out by then, which is fine because uh, what I've found is that it's less about the content within the exam. You can see what the content is going to be on the exam objectives as well as the content within the course that I'm about to go over today. It's more about study uh, habits as well as your mentality going into the exam and also for the duration of the exam. This video is not going to be as comprehensive as my other ones where I covered the A+, Net+, and Sec+. Uh, the reason being is I wanted to stick to what was important as far as not going over all the details of what's in this course and more of just uh, what worked for me to study and pass this exam. The first word of advice that I would like to get out of the way is do not let your certifications expire. So I got my A+, Net+, and Sec+, back in 2019 and the way that these exams work is that if you get one, then you have an expiration date of three years from the date of passing the exam if you get one of higher level. For example, if you get your A+, plus and then you get your Net+, plus next, whatever the date that you pass that Net+, plus is going to actually update the expiration date of the A+, plus and so on. So my goal was to renew all three of my certifications by getting the Cybersecurity Analyst+. Plus. Uh, I, you know what, life happened and I wasn't able to do it within those three years. And by the time I actually did pass this exam, three years had already passed, so all of those other ones are expired and this one did not renew them. I was bummed out about it. I even emailed CompTIA to open up a case. I even escalated that case to try to see if I can social engineer my way into convincing them to let me renew my other certifications by passing this one, even though it already expired. It didn't work, uh, which is honestly good because that just means that CompTIA does hold a high standard and uh, if your certifications expire, they expire, and there's no way around that. Uh, otherwise, anybody would just be emailing them, convincing them to stay certified when they absolutely should not be certified. So I've always had the mentality where I'm just going to earn a higher level certificate and have that renew all my lower certificates, which is a great way to renew certificates, but uh, you know, life happens sometimes, and uh, if you don't have time to do that, it's really good to stay on top of the continuing education credits because you can actually do less work <laughs> and keep your certifications up to date. Okay, so this certification is considered an intermediate. Uh, it's no longer an entry level like the A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Sec+, plus were. And uh, just to put that in perspective, I have uh, my other ones. This is, uh, Jason Dion has like the printouts where you can print everything out and it's pretty much everything that's covered in the course. You spiral bound it, go to FedEx or something and uh, get it all nice and fancy like this. So this one is for the Network Plus, right? See how thick that is? This is for the Security Plus, um, actually a little bit thinner. Uh, and that's the content within the two. This is for the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus. It is literally bigger than both of these combined. So it is a lot of content, but I would say that it is a lot like the Security Plus. Uh, because I had taken that before, so much of that knowledge, it, while it was a while ago, so much of that, of that knowledge was, uh, was super helpful. If you catch Jason Dion's courses on Udemy while they're on sale, you can get it for like 16 bucks. Uh, what I do is I just open up a new email, use a burner email, and then uh, every time it's your first time buying a course, you get them for a huge discount, so I would suggest doing that. I always opt to get both the full course which comes with a practice exam, but I also get his supplementary course that has the, it has like five practice exams and it uh, includes simulations with them as well. Whenever I do start the course, the first thing that I do is I print this out. It's a PDF that he has. <clears throat> I print everything out front and back, and then I go to FedEx and then I get it spiral bound and covered. Uh, this is super helpful to go through all of the videos, taking notes and following along as I go. Um, as you can see, like I have tabs here for all the things that I need to go over. Man, I have uh, notes for all the tools that were covered. Just to go over a few of them, Nessus, Arachne, uh, these are web app scanners, the Harvester, TCP dump, Flare VM, Wireshark, PFSense, Snort, Security Onion, 
uh, just basic things, bash, power, shell, python, the sleuth kit, netcat, volatility, framework, um, it's a lot of stuff. So as far as my actual studying for the exam, what I would do is I would, I believe this course was like 30 hours, so I would try to set some time aside, at least 30 minutes to an hour uh, every night out of the week. Sometimes that wouldn't happen. Honestly, most weeks I would get like four hours of studying in tops. Um, this took me about three or four months of doing that in order to study and uh, feel at least somewhat prepared. Uh, what I did was I would sit down at night, I would watch some videos and then go over it in, uh, in this notebook as I'm following along. Uh, as I was going through, I was taking note cards. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of note cards. These are actually the note cards that I had from my Network Plus and Security Plus as far as ports and protocols. Um, a bunch of other ones that he added in uh, on this one as far as ports and protocols and then just basic things that I went over. I ended up with a lot of these to the point where like towards the end I just stopped doing them because I did not have any more time. So what I would do is I would every night I would study, get a little bit in, and then throughout the week as I was driving, every time I was driving, every time I was doing the dishes, every time I was folding my laundry, anything where I could just listen to audio of the, the lessons that I had gone over previously, um, it was super helpful because I would just listen to it and then uh, while it was something I would already gone over, I would be able to hear it a second time and sometimes I would have that aha moment and, uh, and really understand what was being covered in that lesson. Once I was able to get through the entire course, uh, that's when I started taking the practice exams. I believe my first practice exam I got like a 68% or something like that. And I just went over uh, everything, not only the ones that I got wrong, but the ones I got right. So I would finish practice exam, it was like 50, 60 questions, something like that. And I would read every single one and go over it one more time. It would take a while, but it would really ingrain in my memory of the things that I got right and the things that I missed. Um, and not only that, like if, if there were multiple choice options and there was things covering say TCP, UDP, whatever, I would make sure that I understood what each one of those answers were. I understood what the question was asking. I understood why the other ones weren't correct and what those even meant, what, whether it was a definition or a protocol or whatever. And I found that to be more helpful than anything else. Practice exams, practice exams, practice exams. That is what definitely got me through this. Uh, again, I had scheduled my exam and uh, I started to run out of time and it had already been going on to like four months where I needed to pass this thing. I wanted to get out of the way. So at that point I was scoring about 75 to 80% on the practice exams. Um, but I had, <laughs> I had passed so many of these exams going into it that I had a little bit of confidence that I was gonna be all right. Honestly, maybe a little bit too overconfident, but uh, going into it, uh, every other time I've taken one of these exams, I was terrified. Um, <laughs> I felt as prepared as I possibly could. You know, I only know what I know. So there was nothing more that I could do, right? Uh, but when I would go through them, uh, I would start answering questions and then there would be like two or three or four or five or even six or seven in a row that were like, I had no idea. And it can be really, really discouraging and just uh, take a huge hit on your morale while going through it. But what I found is that I really have to, every single question that I go into has to be fresh. Um, forget anything that I felt like I got wrong in the last one, you know, forget uh, any confusion that I might have and really just take each one as a new question because oftentimes uh, it can be those one or two that you aren't sure about that you just say, oh, screw it, you know what, I'm already going to fail anyway and then going through it. If you just get those correctly and actually put the time in to like uh, try your best, that could be a make or break situation, uh, which potentially is what happened to me because once I got through this exam and I got to the end, I passed, but just barely. Uh, I believe it's 900 points, you need 750 to pass. I got a 768, which means if I missed like two or three questions, I probably would have failed. I would definitely recommend, if you have the time, to go over all of the labs and stuff that Jason Dion goes over. Really, every time he tells you about a tool, practice using that tool, especially Nmap. Nmap is huge, it is in the simulations, uh, and it's all over the test uh, to know how to navigate and use Nmap. Security Onion is a huge one. Uh, that's a seam that Jason Dion introduces and shows you how to use it. I would definitely recommend getting that installed and up and running so you can play around with it and get familiar with how it works. Start reviewing logs and that sort of thing. Another thing I did was I made my own little cheat sheet, so every time Jason goes over, the exam and he says that this is going to be on the exam. Um, I wrote that down here, uh, some things that I needed to memorize, uh, just like so I had some like last minute stuff to go over 
uh, key key words, you know, key definitions, um, things like that, uh, like nmap, some of the commands, um, that sort of thing. Uh, so I just went over this and I and I was reviewing it right before my exam. So yeah, I passed just barely, uh, which is kind of what I expected. Like I said, I was getting about 70s, 80s on the practice exams. 100% um, the best thing that you can do for yourself is get through as many practice exams as you can. Go over them over and over and over. Review every single question, every single multiple choice option. Understand what those mean. Um, when I went into this, no, I did not memorize all like 300 of these cards. Um, I was familiar with most of them, uh, but I just got to a point where I was running out of time and I really needed to take this exam. But if you have the time, 100% try to get in there and understand as much as you can. Go over all the tools that were covered in the course. Really get your hands dirty and practice uh, so you can get familiar with it. And again, don't let your certifications expire. Anyway, thanks guys for watching the video. Um, again, if you have any questions, I just wanted this to be a, a quick video. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram. I'm more active on there. Uh, my handle is zero day James, one word. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all that good jazz, and uh, I will catch you on the next one.